wait a minute. Brother Chris, you win the prize. You folks win. You guys, that's right. Brother Mark, you win. You follow direction. I never said sit down. Stand speaking up. If I had the power to take salvation, I would take it from every one of you dirty rascals that just sat down. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All I said was turn to Genesis chapter number 18. And Brother Hawk, you led this crowd down the primrose path of disobedience to the pastor. Man, I cannot believe that that just happened on my watch. That was a good song. You really, boy. I, 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 was, I was back in my study and I, I had several songs written down uh, for services today that I thought if the Lord gave us liberty, maybe we'd plug them in somewhere. And the song leader, I'm not overstepping uh, uh, his job. I just, every once in a while, get a song I like to sing. And I was just before the service, I was back there. And uh, for some reason, uh, I know what it was. I was listening to uh, a Christian radio station on the internet, and that song came on. I said, man, that's a good song. And, uh, and so I thumbed into our songbook, and there it is. Right there. And so uh, I'm glad. You sounded good on that. We'll sing that song again. That's a good one. Uh, Genesis in chapter number 18. And uh, let's read a couple of verses and let's get uh, this thought going uh, so that we can, we can get done here tonight. All right? Look up. Look with me. I'm sorry. Genesis 18. Look with me, please. Verse number 16. The Bible says, And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham? That thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which has come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Verse number 19, three words, are the words that we're looking at that the Lord has led us to on this Sunday. I know him. I know him. Father, help us tonight. Lord, we want to be diligent to the scriptures and so help us uh, as we preach them to do uh, what you would have us to do. And Lord, a lot of things that need to be said tonight. And uh, we want to do that, uh, Lord, in the spirit of meekness, understanding our own self. But Lord, I pray that at the same time you would challenge our hearts as you challenged me from this text. This is where you led me in my devotions. And I'm thankful for what you showed me and how you spoke to my heart. Lord, I want it to be said of me that you know me. And, uh, and far beyond... Uh, that knowledge that you have, but I have been the man that you uh, wanted me to be, and therefore you would share with me like you did with Abraham. And uh, I believe you're the same God today that you were in those days. And so help us as we look into the scriptures. We thank you for these that are here. It's good to have Brother and Sister Brown and, uh, in the house with us asking that you'd give them, uh, Lord, an extra measure uh, of grace and comfort through this time. But we thank you for them being here tonight. Thank you for the people of God. Lord, truly, uh, I'd go home right now and be absolutely encouraged just because of their singing. They lifted it up. And I can just imagine that you were pleased with what took place through the singing. But I pray that we would do the same with the preaching tonight. We ask all these things in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I told you this morning, and, uh, and we definitely don't have time to rehearse this morning's message because we were leading to this thought. We looked at the first eight verses. If you missed the morning message, uh, you can get it uh, on the internet or whatever, and it would be good for you to catch up to speed because it sort of gives you the preface to why it is that the Lord, and we recognized in the scripture this morning, that the Lord that is mentioned in, this, in, this verse, in these verses that we read uh, is the same Lord that is mentioned in verse number one, and we believe it to be the pre-incarnate Lord Jesus Christ, because Lord or Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New Testament. And, uh, and you'd see some things in this text, and we dug them out this morning. But we, we're trying to figure out why it is that the Lord uh, said about Abraham that he knew him. 
We established this morning that we, uh, I do not believe that it was because the omniscient God knows everyone. I don't believe that's why he made that statement, even though he didn't know Abraham that way. I don't believe that it had anything to do with the omnipotent God, all-powerful uh, uh, God, that is the one that could cause Abraham to do all the things that the Lord says about him. I don't believe that was why. I believe it was because in verses 1 through 8, you would find the character of a servant of God who had in other places in the Scripture proved himself to God. Therefore, God says, or the Lord says in verse number 19, I know him. He is a man of character. He is a man of conduct. He is a man that will carry on because I know him from the past. I'll trust him with what I'm about to tell him right here. And oh, uh, oh, would all of us get to the place in our Christian life where God or the Lord, but God would say, I know them, I could trust them because I not only know what they've done and I know what they are doing, but because of what they've done here and because of what they've done here, I know that they'll continue to do that. Abraham was far from perfect. Nothing about Abraham was perfect. He was as imperfect as I am, as imperfect as you are. But yet God would use him to birth the nation of Israel and to their birth the Savior of the world. It's all contained in the text. But why did God, why did the Lord say, I know him? We saw the Savior and the servant, the servant and his swiftness and his submission, his solicitation, his sacrifice, and his satisfaction. In verses 9 through 15, you have the servant and the son. This is the promised son, the promised seed. It is Isaac. I know I'm talking fast. I'm just trying to get to the point here. Uh, and we didn't look at verses 9 through 15 uh, this morning, but now you have there the servant being Abraham, and then you have the promised son being Isaac. And we know that in that text right there, we uh, laid out this uh, uh, passage of Scripture. And in verses 12 through 15, I put the title, uh, The Snickering. Uh, and it is there that Sarah laughed. She laughed and because uh, she knew her age. And yet there, the Lord said, I'm going to give you a child. And, a and, uh, and uh, Sarah uh, heard that and she laughed about that. And some of you ladies would laugh too if you were the same age as her uh, about having a child. Uh, you know what interesting thing uh, uh, about that. Do you know that Abraham also laughed about that back in the chapter previous to this when God told him uh, that, uh, that it was going to come the time in his life uh, that he was going to have a child? Do you know that Abraham laughed? Uh, Isaac's name has to do with laughter. Uh, you know, God does have a sense of humor. He knew Abraham laughed. He knew Sarah laughed about that. Uh, and so you see there the servant and the son. But I want you to look with me, please, at verse number 16. And I want you to see the servant and the secret. Oh, I like this part of the text. Now, all that we learned about Abraham up to this point, I mean, we see him jumping up and running to some guys he didn't even know. We see him in submission as he bows himself before them. We see him as the servant. We see him as the one that would sacrifice and go and get the tender young calf and sacrifice it. We see him satisfied as he fed them and he stood by and watched them eat and just had satisfaction in his heart. And uh, I mean, just that, that servant attitude. And that leads us to verse number 16. And I want you to see the servant and the secret. Look at the respect of verse number 16. And the men rose up from thence. This is after they had eaten and talked with Abraham. And looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Now stay with me tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a lot of things. And I want you to grab hold of uh, something along the way. Uh, but look at the respect that Abraham has for these that have come his way. The Bible says that he walked with them. Now, he is not being nosy, lest you think that he is. What he's being is courteous. Well, I ought to just stop and preach right there, Brother Hawk, about being courteous, about having respect for others and respect for those that we deal with. You're a Christian. You ought to act like one all the time, especially when you're out in the public, especially when you're in the store. Uh, you say, well, she, that, that, that waitress didn't treat me right. Well, you probably weren't acting right. I mean, I don't know, uh, but listen, you ought to be respectful. You ought to be courteous. You ought to say, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. No, sir. Hey, people don't like to hear that. I don't care what people like to hear. 
How many, how many of us go somewhere and then we say, uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm not a ma'am. Then what are you? Would you like me to call you a sir? Of course, in today's society, we don't really know. I mean, we are talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. We don't really know what it is, but so maybe, maybe the next time somebody says that to them, just go, oh, 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 yes, sir. Watch how offended they would get. You know, it's all right to be respectful. This generation that's being raised right now, most disrespectful bunch of punks in all the world. That's why we bring them. Calvary Baptist Church. That's why we take them to camp. That's why we preach at them. That's why we bring them out. What are we doing? We're teaching them. That's why I said it. Let me just go ahead and say it again. That's brother and sister Caston. Brother and sister Caston. Brother and sister Caston. Brother Caston. Sister Caston. Anyways, I'd just like to plug that. Uh, and I, by the way, I feel the same way about you. Now, I won't ask around the room how many of you I call by the first name because there would be no hands that go up, because I don't do that. And the last time I checked, I'm the pastor. Well, right, you must really think you're high and mighty. No, I don't think that at all, but I just want to show you respect, the respect I think you deserve. Your brother so-and-so, your sister so-and-so. I mean, I just think we ought to do that. It's a level of respect. It's good for us to do that. We ought to be respectful. So look at his respect. He's not going along, trying to find things out, trying to do any of that, but he is walking with them to show them the way. This was a courteous thing. They did this in those days. This would, uh, this would have been like, there's in the vernacular that you and I would understand, this would have been like taking him, uh, taking these fellows to the airport. It would, have been, it would have been like Brother Mark dropping them off at the train station. He was just walking them on the way. He was taking them to the end of the property, to the edge of the... He was just walking with them. And, and so here's what's going on. They're having a conversation uh, through all of this. He is respecting... I'm sorry, his respect, though. Now watch this. I didn't say all that for no good reason. His respect is going to pay off. I want to show you that. Look at the request of verse number 17. And the Lord... See it all capital letters... This isn't one of the angels. This is the Lord. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Look at the request. Now, I want you to picture something with me. Here's Abraham, and here's uh, what we believe to be the Lord. The Bible says the Lord, and a couple angels are with him, and they're walking down the road, and Abraham's uh, traveling with them, whether he's walking next to them, whatever it is, conversations going on, things are happening. I, I like this. The Lord didn't look at Abraham. Well, let's imagine Abraham was standing over here, and here's the two angels, and they're walking down the road, and, uh, and here's the Lord. He looks at the two angels, and, fellas, do you think that I ought to tell? You think I ought to tell them what, what we're here to do? I'll guarantee you that piqued Abraham's curiosity just a little bit. Like, what's he talking about? It reminds me of a passage of Scripture in the, uh, in the uh, New Testament uh, where Jesus was walking with some disciples on the road to Emmaus after he had been resurrected and they didn't know who he was. And the Bible just says he was just sort of walking along with them. And he said to them, why are you so sad? And they said, Haven't, I mean, where, where you been, man, hiding underneath a rock? That Jesus Christ, the one that was supposed to save us, has died on the cross, and they buried him, and he's been three days, and now he's gone, and we don't know where he's at. And the whole time, Jesus is standing, he's just walking, he's walking with them, and, and I would imagine he's thinking, dummies. No, I don't think he was thinking that. I mean, he, these, are, these are disciples, right? These are, I mean, those that have, would have been following him. And he walks with them, and then they decide, they get to their destination after walking with them for quite a while. They get to their destination, they're going to turn in for a meal, and they begin to have a conversation, and they were going to go into their house, and Jesus is kind of standing around, and he's just going to carry on down the road because he's not going to go where he's not invited. Boy, there's a, I mean, I don't have time to preach that message, but he's not going to go where he's not invited, and he's not going to come where he's not invited either. So there they go, and they're going to go off, and and I, I always just, I always imagine Jesus just kind of standing there doing one of these while they're talking. Man, I'm hungry. I'm about ready to turn into the house, man. You about ready to get some food? And there's Jesus just standing there. And you know, I know Jesus well enough to know that he is in, inside. He's going, oh, I hope they ask me to come. Can you think about that? Oh, boy. I, 
I, I sure do hope that I get a chance to go in with them, spend some time with them. I, I, I really hope they ask me. I'm not going to force my way in, but I hope they ask me. And they asked him, and he went with them. And then the Bible says that he revealed himself to them, opened up the scriptures. Wow! I love that story. Kind of the same scenario. He's walking, and Abraham is there, whether behind or next to them. <laughs> Fellas, you think I ought to tell him what I'm about to do? Now, the request is there. But listen, without the respect for the casting, you don't get to the request. What if Abraham would have said, Sayonara, fellas? And they go off down the road. Abraham's not going to get the blessing that he's about to receive right here. And by the way, unless you read the entirety of the rest of the text, you would find he's not going to also stand before the Lord and petition on behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah and try to save the life of Lot and others down there that uh, uh, quite possibly uh, he was uh, instrumental in saving. But uh, so, so the respect got him some, somewhere. Respect will get you somewhere. So before he shares anything, uh, uh, here's the thing. He is going to evaluate him. Stay with me to see if he's qualified to hear what the secret is. God knows that Abraham will father and will birth the Jewish nation. And from this line, the Savior will be born. And here's your phrase that will answer that. Blessed, remember I told you this this morning? Be blessed, not of him, but in him. He was talking about Abraham birthing the, the Savior into the world from his line. That's why he said all nations not will be blessed of him. That's why I like the King James Bible. It's not the word O. F. It's the word I in. That means part of him. It's in him. Okay? You understand that? It's vitally important. Not blessed of Abraham. We're blessed in Abraham because he brought the Savior into the world. Not him, but his line. And so we uh, will say that this is in his, uh, I want to call this, uh, under this request, I want you to see something. God is going to evaluate him. And in verse number 18, here's what you see. I don't have time to dig into this text. But I will call this, look what it says. Uh, Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. I call this his public life. This is his public life. Okay? If you sort of put your thinking cap on and, and, and see that there. He'll become great and mighty, a nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. America has been blessed because of what Abraham was and did. Hello. That's because of God. That started back. All nations have been blessed because of Abraham. Be I mean, I, I, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. That's, because, that's a public life. But there is another evaluation that we have to look at, and it's the more important. You see the respect, the request, but I want you to see the reason in verse number 19. And this is what I call not public life of verse number 18. This is private life. For I know him. And he's going to give us a list here. He does not. Now watch this. Abraham. Now you can believe this or not believe it. But I believe it because man was created with free will. Covered this this morning. Abraham, Brother Caston, does not have to do any of what verse 19 says. He doesn't have to. You say, what do you mean he doesn't have to? Well, look at what it says. He will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord and do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Abraham doesn't have to do any of that. Abraham can give birth to Isaac and go live like the devil if he wants to. He doesn't have to control his children or do anything with his children. This is a choice that Abraham is going to make. Hello, you're quiet. Do you not think that Abraham could do whatever he wanted to? Was Abraham a robot? We, we are, we're not, but he was. No. That's why I said this was his public life up here, that he was going to give birth to Isaac. God said, you're going to give birth to Isaac. But what God is saying, what the Lord is saying in verse number 19, is that I have watched him, and I know him, and I know that I can trust him. Let me give you a couple of verses. Go to uh, Psalm chapter number 34. Time's getting away. Psalm chapter number 34. And look at verse number 15 with me. 
The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And this is a, this this will this will preach along with Genesis chapter number 18. And his, his ears are open unto their cry. If you'll note in the latter ha half of chapter number 18, Abraham's going to make a request of God. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears, that's going to be the request from Abraham, is open unto their cry. Look with me at um, uh, Psalm chapter number 1. We, we're familiar with this. Psalm chapter number 1 and verse number 6. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So this is my thought here. You see the respect and the request, and now I see the reason here in his private life. This is what I would refer to as the real Abraham. Verse number 19 is the real Abraham. The Abraham behind closed doors. The Abraham in his private life that you and I are not really all that privy to in the scriptures. We have a lot of the life of Abraham, but Brother Aaron, there's a lot of the life of Abraham. We don't have a stinking clue. The guy lived a long time. There's a lot of things that took place in his home. I don't know anything about it. I don't know how he raised his kids. I don't know what rules he, I don't know anything about it, but yet the Lord gives us some insight into his private life right here. Can I give you uh, the three things that I pulled out of this text and help you? Can I do that? I'm going to preach my Father's Day sermon early. I'm going to preach about Father Abraham, but I think it's applicable for everybody here. Number one, I want you to see that the real Abraham, he would have, number one, he would have command. Look at what it says. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. I studied this out, and this is what I found. The word command in this text right here and in other places in the Bible literally means this, issuing orders. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, Daddy, your job's to issue orders. This isn't like a democracy where I take a vote in the house about what we're going to or not going to do. Hello, Dad, the Bible says that God is going to trust Abraham with a secret, and the secret things, I'm jumping ahead, belong unto the Lord and to those that love him. There's verses, by the way, to back all that up. And if you want to know something from the Lord, that means we better follow the example. Why do you think that's in the Bible? Because God's given us an example. And here's what he's saying. I'm going to give Abraham a secret because I know Abraham. And I know what Abraham's going to do. And he says, and I know that Abraham's going to command. He is going to issue orders to his children. When you join the military, you don't get a vote on whether or not you want to go do thus and thus. They order you to do it. They say, go and dig a hole. Why, well, you know, I really don't feel like digging that hole. Do you know if you just change that hole a little bit, it'd be a lot easier to dig. Oh, boy, I could really go to preaching. I mean, you know, if you just make it a little easier, like get it muddy first. Oh, that's pretty good, right? That's profound, Brother Hawk. You better write that down. If you just muddy it up a little bit, make that hole easier for me to understand, I dig it. Um, uh, private, you know what? I I'm not going to do anything. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to give you a shovel. You can use your hat. Wow, that's awful hard. I'll tell you what, keep complaining. How about you use your hands? They don't mess around with that. But you know what we've turned households into in America today? Everybody gets a vote. I got a vote in my household. I remember getting a vote. I voted wrong one time. Dad beat me with a belt. I never voted again. Hey, Dad would say, let's take a vote. I'm out. I'm abstaining. I'm going to, Dad, uh, can I get an absentee ballot on this one? <laughs> I don't want to vote on that. Man, that's going to get me in hot water because I'm liable to vote the wrong way. I mean, Dad's going to issue the order. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. But listen, in all seriousness, Abraham, the Bible says he was not only going to command, do you see it? His children and his household. 
anybody that lived underneath the roof of Abraham was going to do what Father Abraham said. Because Abraham said, it's my house and it's my rules. And Isaac, if you don't like it, there's plenty of world out there you can go live in. Servants, if you don't like it, there's plenty of world out there you can go live in. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. You say, well, we don't like it. I know I don't like it either. But it says that he'll command his children and his household. He has command. It means to charge, to put, or to set in order. Now, I want to know some things from the Lord. Now, you can ask my wife. As sure as I'm standing here, I am not a dictator. But as sure as I'm standing here, you can ask Mrs. Lefebvre whether or not I'm in command in the house and whether or not there's been situations where we might not exactly see eye to eye on something. And I promise you, I promise you, that as long as she is walking with the Lord and I am walking with the Lord, she always, always, always says whatever you say. You're in charge. I'll not stand and give account, and if it's the wrong decision, you will. But if it's the right decision, you will also. And dad, you might want to listen to me. You're in charge of that house. Take stinking charge of the house. Be in charge of the house. Don't ask. Well, but, 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 but nothing. Our job, if we want to follow the example, and be blessed of God. And God and the Lord said, Abraham, I know him. I know his character. He says he's going to command his children. Isaac loved daddy. And so did Ishmael. He loved daddy too. That was his father. But I promise you, I, he, had, he had control over his household. And we wonder why our... Our, our, our lives aren't blessed? Why isn't my life blessed? I don't know, what's your walk with the Lord like? And that's not just for fathers, that's for mothers too. It's, it's, it's God, it's dad, it's mama. Enforce whatever rule daddy has set down. This ain't, this ain't an asking thing. Are we going to church? Hey, what? 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 Did you just ask me that? You got something wrong. Did you fall this week? Did you fall off the monkey bars? Get up. Get your Bible. We're going to church. Get up. Get your Bible. And go to your Sunday school class. Don't get quiet. Don't get quiet on the preacher. Well, listen. We ought to be in charge. And our children will respect it. And the next generation will respect it. We're not mean. We're not belligerent. But we in love because we're in charge. We're responsible. And I've made enough mistakes that I'm trying to avoid making more. And so if there's some things that are pretty clearly laid out in the Scripture, I want to go ahead and try to follow those so that I don't botch them up. I don't know that I'm going to be able to claim ignorance in front of God, but I'd like to at least have a shot at claiming ignorance in some areas. But the areas where I don't have a shot at it, I'm just going to go ahead and do what the Bible says. Abraham? You're about to get a secret from the Lord. But the only way you're going to get that secret is because the Lord said that he knows that you're going to command your children. You're, you're going to issue orders and say, it's time to carry out these orders. How about, not only did he have command, he had character. Do you see it? He said he will command his children and his household. Two words, after him. Well, see, I said all of what I just said, but here's the, here's the real key. Brother Brown... It said after him. In other words, Abraham also knew that somebody issued him some orders and that he was a servant, we saw that, and that he must follow what the orders had been given to him, therefore being, a, a, being an example to those he was commanding. He was leading the charge. 
He was the front runner. He was out there. He was getting it done. He had character. This phrase, uh, as I studied it, carries the idea of leaving a legacy for others to follow. It is not just words. It is walk. Why does the preacher, why is the preacher so old fashioned? Why is the preacher so old past? Because I really, I say it a hundred times, but it just bears repeating. Because I want to leave something for the next generation. It doesn't take much to leave nothing for the next generation. Anybody can sit down and do nothing and stand for nothing and leave nothing for the next generation. But we, what we need is some men and women that will stand up and take charge and have character and not just speak it, but they will live it all the time for others that will come behind them and give them something to follow so that we don't lose it. The Lord doesn't come back. We're that close to losing what we have. And we say it so much that I don't even think Brother Caston people care anymore. I don't think they care. There's probably some in this room right now, and in all honesty, I made that statement, and you don't give a rip whether or not that Bible is preached 20 years from now. You don't care one whit about whether or not the hymns that are in that hymn book you wouldn't care if that hymn book was there or not there. It doesn't really make a hill of beans to you. Whether or not doors are knocked on and the gospel is given, the gospel according to the scriptures, and we're going to lose a whole generation. And if you think we're going to recover from it, we're not. Because who's going to be there to train us? All of us and I'll have to put myself in all us old guys. We're going by the wayside. I don't know how long the Lord has left or has me here. I, don't, I mean, not here. I mean, on earth. And my word, I want to I wanna be able to command, but I want to command from a position of character where people can look at me and say, he never wavered. He never backed down. He never backed up. I was reading. Uh, there's a church. As a matter of fact, the church that we were just in, in Lexington today had a preacher 101 years old and he preached 101 still traveling still preaching Dr. Treber today talking about the preacher he had two months two months ago 87 years old that man of God I watched the message man that man of God got up and he does this little shimmy thing. At 87 years old, he was getting all excited up there doing one of these. Today he's bedridden. Because before he made that trip, the doctors told him that he had less than two months to live. And he got on an airplane, flew all the way across the country to California, got on that, got on that platform and preached. And now he's bedridden. Talked to Dr. Treber today and said, Doc, I just want you to know I'm saved. Jesus is my Savior. I know I've been born again. I know that heaven is my home. I don't think I'm going to get out of this bed, but that's all right. I know where I'm going. Hey, it, it's all right. It's still good. That's character. That's the guys I'm looking to. Man, those are the guys I'm saying, 101 years old, not going to make it that long, but if I do, I hope I'm still standing and preaching at 101 years old and not have been a compromiser. A compromiser. Any loser can be a compromiser. It takes someone with standards and a backbone like a telephone pole to stand for something in this world and to be like Abraham and to get in on the secret things of God. So you see his reason? He had command, he had character, and he had continuation. And here it is. He said, because I know, it says, I know him that he'll command his children in his household and they shall keep the way of the Lord and do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. There's continuation. Because of what they saw, they will do. So many times we ask ourselves the question, why does it seem like so many of our children go astray? One man said this. He said, what you do speaks louder. What you do speaks so loud that I cannot hear what you say. Should I repeat that? Why are we losing so many of our children? Because what we do speaks so loud that they cannot hear what we say. And they watch us. 
and they watch us, and they watch us. I was walking down this hallway right before the service, and one of those boys, I get them all confused all the time, one of those lavity boys was walking, I have been Nathan, uh, was it you? It was you. It was you now, because I picked you. <coughs> he came in the back door, he came in the door, and I was walking down the hall. And I was just, man, I'm cruising to my office, getting ready to start service, and he saw me. He poked his head around the door, or poked his head around the wall, and he said, hi, pastor. He didn't say, hi, Matt. He didn't say, hi, Pastor Matt. He recognized me as the pastor. You say, well, he sees you all the time. Well, yeah, and I, you know, you're right. But you know what? Someday, 20 years from now, somebody may say that to him, Brother Brown. You want to know why? I hope it's because he had a pastor for as much time as he had me that he watched that example. And he would say, I could be like that someday. And by the way, you can be. And not like me, but like him. And not like anybody else in the church besides your father. <laughs> but be like him, because that's the one we're following. What we, what we do speaks so loud. How many times we've all done something that spoke so loud that it's overshadowed all the good things that we've said. Mm -hmm. Abraham, you're going to get a secret. Oh, man, I want a secret from the Lord. Lord, would you whisper something in my ear that nobody else knows? Sarah didn't know it. Isaac didn't know it. Ishmael didn't know it. Nobody else knew it. But God got real close to Abraham. He said, Abraham, what the he said, I know your character. I've seen you in action. He said, I want to tell you what I'm about to do. I'm about to go down to that wicked city, and I'm about to destroy it. And Abraham's heart broke, and he said, I've got to do something about that. See, the secret that the Lord gives you may be on behalf of somebody else. And Abraham would beseech on behalf of an entire city, knowing that it was wicked, Started at 50, worked himself all the way down to 10. And I love that every single time, God listened. God hearkened. And God said, all right, Abraham. If there's 40, I'll, I'll spare it for 40. Abraham said, I don't think there's 40. Uh, Lord? Yes, Abraham. You think about 30. All right, Abraham, for 30, I won't do it. You, I should have went lower. I don't think there's 30. It's been a long time since I've been down there, but I don't think Lot's been, I think Lot's compromised. Lord, yes, Abraham. What about 20? Yes, Abraham, if there's 20 down there, I won't destroy it. Why did I say 20? There's Lot, there's Mrs. Lot, there's the girls, there's four. There's the son-in-laws. Eh, we won't even talk about son-in-laws. Where's my son-in-law? Son-in-laws. They're probably a mess. Now the girls, oh, the whole thing's a wreck. Lord! Yes, Abraham. Ten? Yeah, Abraham. How sad, though, that God didn't find ten, Brother Chris. Message for another day, but how sad. He went to God on behalf of that place and got it from 50 to 10, and there wasn't even 10 righteous people that God would, dis would spare an entire city and all of its surrounding area, and it would eventually cost Lot his wife, his daughters, and the mess that we have in the Middle East. Because there wasn't even ten righteous people. But Abraham got to hear that secret. Here's why. Because God said, I know him. And he'll stand for truth, and he'll...
teach his children and he'll walk in the way that I want him to. He was not perfect, but I know that I can trust him. God trust us. When's the last time God shared a secret with you? The secret things belong unto the Lord, but do you know that the Bible goes on past that? And it says that he revealeth them unto us. Unto those, now watch, that fear him. Reverential fear. And I, I want to I know a secret from the Lord. I want to know something from the Lord. Brother Brown, you don't know, and it doesn't mean that I want to be smarter than you. I just want God to whisper something in my ear. And I want you to know a secret from the Lord that I don't know because I think that you deserve it. Brother John, I want the same for you. Brother Kimler, Mrs. Kimler, and everybody in this room. You never get it without doing what we're supposed to do. Father, we love you. Lord, you, you love us. You loved us. You sent your son. There's more in this text that we could look at, but... We want to just be, Lord, what, what, what would you have us to do tonight? This was, not, this was not for fathers. It was not for mothers. It was for all of us. Because in all areas of our life, somewhere along the way, we have some that are looking at us. And Lord, all my imperfections and shortcomings, and there's plenty of them to go around, and I'm sure that while I was preaching, maybe even someone in this room said, but he's saying that, but... And it's very easy to see mine because I'm in the public light. And Lord, it's easy for us to hide things. But I believe that what Abraham was in public, Abraham was in private. And I believe that's what you're looking for. And because of him, you would do great things. But you said you know him. And would the thing that would be most said about us was that you know us. And that you can trust us. Maybe the reason that you don't ask us to do anything is because you know you can't trust us. You can't trust us with what you, what you would give to us and the mission and the job that you would have us to do. And may we be trustworthy. Let's all stand with heads bowed and eyes are closed. I'm not going to ask for show of hands.